Recently, I was sent the Electric 32M4K 144FS, a 32-inch 4K IPS 144Hz monitor to review courtesy of Laptops Direct. Now, before I get into this video, I do want to add a quick disclaimer that I was sent this monitor for free by Laptops Direct, but they haven't seen this video before it's gone live, and they didn't give me any prompts or anything like that to say in the video. This video is entirely my own opinions. This is, to my knowledge, the cheapest 32-inch 4K 144Hz screen on the market that you can get for your PC, Xbox, or PS5. As you can get this for around £400, although I have seen it a little bit cheaper, the prices do tend to fluctuate, so keep an eye out for that. And for someone like me who uses their office space as a sort of hybrid gaming workspace, this kind of monitor is perfect. That being said, there are definitely a few drawbacks with this product, and I'll be going through those things in this video. I also want to quickly preface this video by saying that this isn't going to be a super in-depth review. I'm not going to be doing any charts or comparisons or anything like that. This is literally going to be a review based on my experience using it in day-to-day -day life for gaming, work, and things like that. So before I was using this screen, I was actually using Electric's 49-inch ultra-wide, which was a 1440p display, not 4K like this one, and it was great. However, the VA panel compared to this definitely lacked contrast and color, and the HDR wasn't that good either. Now, when I had that ultra wide, I didn't actually realize that the screen lacked color until I got this IPS panel, which compared to the ultra wide is like night and day. The color and contrast on this screen is so much better. Now, I did wonder at first if going from a 32 by nine to a 16 by nine would take a lot of getting used to, but if I'm honest, other than it being super immersive for gaming, the ultra wide wasn't being used to its full potential. I tend to drag everything into the middle of the screen anyway, so I was essentially using the ultra wide like a 16 by 9 screen unless I was gaming. So setting up this monitor is super easy. When you get out of the box, you'll find the solid metal stand, which does feel pretty good, but it only has tilt adjustment. There's no height or pivot functions. Now for me, that makes a stand pretty much useless because you can't adjust the height, and that's essential to me for good ergonomics. So in the end, I put this on a monitor arm, and you can do this too. It just has a standard VESA 100 on the back. It's also worth pointing out that the stand, although metal and feels quite sturdy, is quite wobbly when the screen's on it. So yeah, I would just not use this stand at all and look for a different option almost immediately. Looking at the design, it's fairly minimal, it has a matte black finish, but one thing that I don't really like is that although the frame of the screen seems bezel-less, the actual image inside the frame has a black border. This means that you couldn't put two of these screens together side by side and have a seamless experience. And this could be a deal breaker for a lot of gamers. Turning the monitor around, there's some LEDs on the back and this basically cycles through an RGB spectrum. I basically turn these off straight away because when these are on, the fan in the monitor kicks in and it is really audible. Like you can hear this when you're just sitting working at your desk. So I turned this off. I also don't really know why Electric added this. It's just gonna add extra cost to the price of the monitor for a feature that most people are never gonna see. Now there is one thing that I really don't like about electric monitors, and that is the white logo on the front. Now I know that electric is not a premium brand like Samsung or LG, but honestly, this white logo, it's so apparent. Could it not just be a slightly dimmer color or debossed into the screen? That would look so much better instead of this white label at the front. I just don't think it looks that good. If anything, I would just leave branding off this entirely so that this looks really sleek and minimalist. But no, we have this electric logo at the front and as I said, not a big fan of it. Now, a few of those design complaints aside, there's no denying that this screen is incredibly well specced for the price. You get a 32 inch 16 by nine IPS panel with a 144 Hz refresh rate. It has seven milliseconds G2G response time and a one millisecond MRPT response time. Now put simply, G2G represents how long it takes for a pixel to change between two colors and MRPT represents how long a pixel is continuously visible for. Now I'm not able to measure these scientifically, but what I can say is I've been using this screen for nearly three months for gaming and pretty much everything. And honestly, I haven't noticed any issues with the screen in terms of delay or ghosting. In fact, this screen seems a lot faster in terms of refresh rate than the ultra wide I had before. Now I have used the popular UFO ghosting test on this monitor and I did not see any ghosting whatsoever. So whether or not you plan to use this monitor for gaming, work or just casual use, you definitely won't be disappointed considering the price. Now another area where Electric could have saved a little bit of money was to get rid of the speakers. You get a pair of three watt speakers in this monitor and they are honestly terrible, but that's the usual case with most monitors. Most people wouldn't dream of using the speakers in a monitor. So if you're planning to get this, just hook up a good pair of speakers. You'll be glad that you did. 
When it comes to connections, the monitor has two HDMI 2.1 ports, two DisplayPort 1.4 ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio out, and that is it. Now, some of you may think that Electric have cut corners by not including a USB hub or anything like that, but to be quite honest, I think the connections in this monitor are actually pretty good, getting two HDMIs and two DisplayPorts. And because this monitor has HDMI 2.1s, it does mean that it supports variable refresh rate, or VRR. That means if you're using an Xbox or PS5 that supports this, you can take advantage of that extra refresh rate. This is basically what PC gamers have had for ages, which is G-Sync or FreeSync, but now we get it on consoles. If you plan to use this monitor via HDMI, you'll get a maximum refresh rate of 120Hz, and if you want to use it by DisplayPort, you'll get the full 144Hz. Now I've been using this monitor with my 3080 Ti, with my gaming PC, which you can see behind me, and honestly the experience has been fantastic. Particularly for gaming, it's been really good. In most games, I get around 120 to 140 FPS depending on the title, which of course is down to the power of your graphics card, so if you're looking to get this monitor, just make sure your graphics card is powerful enough to drive it. But being able to play these games at 144 Hz in 4K on a 32 inch screen just looks absolutely fantastic. And there's a few times I've actually been using this screen and I've almost thought to myself, I can't believe this is, you know, sub 400 pounds because it is that good. Now, obviously I can't compare this to a 1000 pound plus 4K 32 inch 144 hertz screen. But what I can say is that I am more than happy with the quality that you get for the price here. Now I did mention earlier about the improved color on this screen and that's because it uses an IPS panel. Now IPS to IPS, they'd probably all look fairly similar, but because I came from a VA panel on the ultra wide, the difference was really noticeable. IPS of course also offers great viewing angles so you can see the screen from pretty much anywhere. Now the one downside of this IPS panel is the backlight bleed. Now this tends to vary between different IPS screens, sometimes it's really bad even in your expensive models, and on this one it's definitely noticeable. When you load up Elden Ring for example, you can actually see all of the LED bits at the bottom of the screen and it is quite distracting. On my model the IPS bleed is definitely more noticeable around the power button on the bottom right hand side, but generally it's not too bad and although it can be a little bit distracting, once you're playing a game or you're you know watching a film, you tend to just ignore it. Now if you are someone that is bothered by IPS bleed then you may want to look at another screen, but honestly for the price of this it's not really something that bothers me too much and I have seen IPS bleed worse than this on way more expensive panels. When it comes to photo and video editing, which I do a lot of, I feel that 32 inch 4K is like the perfect combination. I did have a 27 inch 4K screen before and although it looks great I do think that everything feels a little bit too crammed together. Whereas the resolution and the scale of things feels great on the 32 inch 4K screen. And one of the most important things with any monitor, if you're planning to do photo or video editing, is one, the clarity and the sharpness, which obviously with 4K we get a lot of here and it looks absolutely brilliant when I'm editing my photos or editing my videos, but also the color accuracy and the color so far, now I've calibrated the screen, looks absolutely brilliant. And I get onto the color coverage later on in this video, but what I can say is that this has been perfect for my needs so far. I mentioned that I was using an ultra wide before this and I did wonder if I would miss it but honestly this screen has been so much better in terms of the refresh rate and the colors that I am so glad that I'm using this now instead of the ultra wide which is something I never thought I'd be saying and to be honest I sit quite close to my screens anyway so 32 inch is basically like my entire peripheral vision so if you're playing a game on this and you sit fairly close it's gonna feel pretty wide anyway and I'm sure that many of you are wondering about the color coverage on the screen. Well, I did use the Spider Elite software and this showed that the screen supports 100% sRGB, 79% NTSC, 83% RGB and 89% P3, which I think for a monitor at this price is absolutely fine. Out of the box, this screen isn't calibrated and you're definitely going to want to do that if you're bothered about your colors. It's funny because when you first get a screen and you turn it on, usually your instinct is this looks pretty good. And it's only until you do the calibration that you realize how bad the colors actually were. So actually when I did this and I used the spider software, there's that little image at the end where you can see the comparisons and there was like a woman's face and in the image before it was like really green and then in the new calibrated it was that more sort of like uh you know magenta color the skin should be so it was actually quite interesting to see how bad it actually was before i calibrated it so if you're going to get this green definitely look at calibrating and especially if you're a photo or video editor then definitely calibrate now this monitor does support hdr 400 but as i've said in other monitor reviews hdr 400 is like your bottom of the barrel lowest grade hdr and in most situations it's not going to look that good i did play elden ring a few times 
times in HDR, but it just lacked the color and punch that the standard mode did. So I've not really used HDR on this monitor since. If you are looking for a monitor that has good HDR support, then this will be one to rule out. Now, the biggest drawback, in my opinion, of this monitor is the on-screen display in the menu system. It is so difficult to navigate. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've accidentally clicked out of the menu or clicked on the wrong thing because you have four buttons at the bottom which sort of correspond to different things, but they don't actually line up with what it says on the screen when you open the menu. So you think going right is one button, but actually it goes back. So it's just really complicated and difficult to wrap your head around. I would have preferred a remote control. The ultra wide that I had before had a remote and that was really easy to use. And that was great. I wish all monitors had that. But with this, yeah, you just want to set your settings when you get the screen and never use the menu system ever again. But once you do navigate the menu system, you will find pretty much everything you need. I do like the fact as well that there's an actual Kelvin white balance on this monitor, which my other one didn't have. You actually had to adjust the RGB values to get that white balance. Whereas on this screen, you can actually set the color temperature, which means for calibrating, it's going to make things a lot easier. There's also a lot of different settings for VRR and the HDMI ports. So just have a look through and see what you need on or off. So overall, I feel that this monitor is actually fantastic fantastic for the price. I mean, £400 for a 32 inch 4K 144 Hertz IPS panel. You just can't get any better than that. And although it does have some drawbacks like the IPS bleed, which is probably the worst thing on this screen, it's not actually that bad. And once you're in a game, you just forget it's even there. And although there could be some nice little things added like a USB hub or improved HDR, Overall, what you get for the price, I think, is more than enough. And the pros of this monitor definitely outweigh the cons. The fact that you get the amazing colors on the IPS panel, that fast refresh rate, HDMI 2.1s for console support, which I, I just think this monitor is a steal. And that's it for my review of the electric 32 inch 144 Hz screen. Honestly, it is a great monitor. If you have any questions about it, feel free to drop them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. This is a great screen. I've really enjoyed using it and big thanks to Laptops Direct for sending this to me. Check out their website. They have a ton of different products at great prices. That's it from me. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out my channel. If you want to see more from me, subscribe, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when I upload another video. And hopefully I will see you in the next